that's so cool. Well, hey everybody, uh, welcome to the Adobe Live Holiday Special. We did it, hello, hi, hey. Um, hi, Claudia, how are you? Hello, I'm Andrew, very excited to be here. Thank you for having me and happy holidays. Happy holidays, it's it's weird because my brain has not comprehended that like the holiday season has started. Um, I've been traveling a little bit and so I landed and started, I was like, oh, the holiday special is on Monday, it's early, and I was like, oh no, it's, it's time, it's ready. Uh, and so I'm very excited for the holidays. <laughs> So you just came back and did that beautiful tree just behind you? I did. I, I Yes, got very, you can see the green screen shadows. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was real at one point, I promise. It is now a disaster back there. Um, oh, you have your mug. I also have my mug. I have a mug and yes. I just realized it looks like I have a red nose. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, chat, if you have your mugs uh, or if you have any holiday traditions, let us know. Oh, there's, there's reverb happening. Um, I'll fix that. I know where it's happening. Hold on. Wait for it. All right, there we go. Uh, we are going to hear it a couple more times probably as I go through these. It's on my end. All right, cool. Um, Claudia, do you have any holiday uh, traditions? So I am very weird with my Christmas. Being weird, I think that's the constant, despite the traditions of Christmas or not, uh, of any sort of holidays. I tend to do very weird Christmas tree, and I think that I went super bonkers in terms of collecting wood from uh, the, the park next to my house and just literally nailing it on the wall and then nailing some, some Christmas lights. So I think that I experimented so much uh, that now I just kind of... Uh, ordered a, a silhouette of a Christmas tree, which I just plug in, it has lights around. And I think I went from a, an extreme of overdoing it to an extreme of being minimal. But I would say experimentation is my spirit for the holiday. I love Having that. Fun. Like It's like an idea of the holidays. It's like a, The concept <laughs> yeah. of holidays have, are being celebrated. Um, so for all of our friends around the world, wherever you're watching from, hopefully you are celebrating the holidays or getting in a merry and bright spirit. Um, and in the spirit of Adobe Live, we want to give you some free stuff uh, because that's what we love to do. This week, all week, we'll be giving away free stuff. And you can go to the link. Where is it? Claudia, if you can point down for me. Right, right there. There, there you go. You got it. I yes. can see it. It starts from yes. there. All over. Expert pointer. Uh, so vid.li slash Adobe Holidays. We have all kinds of assets for you. And you can see here that you can grab uh, stuff from every single one of the streams. If you scroll down, we can find Claudius. And in here, there will be some awesome resources for you to play around with, uh, for you to create alongside us, for you to post on social media. And if you're posting, you can use hashtag Adobe Live Holidays. Uh, and that's just going to be our gift to you literally all week. We have so many fun things coming to you. Claudia, what are we working on? Actually, sorry, Claudia, we have a letter, I believe, that has come in uh, with with a, a request for something to work on today. So we have a letter here from Adobe Live. It says, happy holidays. We all love mail around the holiday season. Let's create a card template and some fun stickers to help spread some holiday cheer. Uh, Claudia, you think we can do that today? <laughs> Uh, stickers. Yes, we can definitely turn yes. our illustration into stickers. Why not? Uh, of course, as I say, experimenting is what I like doing. So although we're supposed to do a greeting card or a postcard, and that's what we're going to find in the folder, we're also, uh, I'm going to be super happy to show you how to turn our illustration into stickers. Yes. So absolutely, let's do that as well. Sweet. Once let's... you open the folder. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, we're just like, we're so we're so <laughs> excited, close. filled with holiday spirit. <laughs> we're excited. Yeah. <laughs> Well, with Andrew, I think we, we've streamed another time before and it's always super fun and excited. So I was really looking forward to it as well. And all I was going to say, I was just going to point out to the folder that you that you showed before, That's what, which is now on my screen as well. And I just want to talk real quick through the different files that I've been sharing. As you mentioned, Andrew, lots of gifts, 
loads and loads of gifts. Uh, so once you open the folder, you will see, first of all, there is a little drawing because I really want to open up this stream to everybody. You don't need to know how to be an expert in drawing. As you can see, those are just very simple sketches that I've done. And I just took a photo of them, some birds, some bears, got some little foxes, little mushroom or little hats that we can use and draw. They're and so of course cute. Can... <laughs> and just some color experimentation. And you can see that, you know, color experimentation doesn't doesn't have to be uh, a wonderful mood board. Of course, it has to be if that's, you know, what you're doing as a project or a professional project. But when you're having fun and when you're experimenting, as we say, that's the keyword for our holiday mood in this stream. Even just uh, some, you know, oil pastels or some uh, any sort of colors that you have in the house will do just to help you experiment with a color palette. And of course, besides the internet, I love to share books. So I have here a couple of books that Ooh. I really, really love. Uh, they're all about you know happiness and all these happy thoughts but i really wanted to show because i think the illustration are super powerful super beautiful and if you can see them right here um but basically what they're all about is a uh, um you know definition of how to live well but what we really care is that illustration really sort of match what we're going to be doing today so yes. i want to show you you know book covers uh illustrated book covers are great inspiration so you don't necessarily have to uh use the internet i know we have so many different libraries that we can use but i think that looking into books and looking into um more you know outside the window you know the bird outside the window and take a photo of maybe and your background yeah exactly <laughs> yes inspire. right here this is yeah this is your your inspiration for the holidays uh and it's great that you can i love color palettes that are just like not necessarily just swatches or whatever. It's like, oh, I have these pens. I have this like outfit. I have whatever of just grabbing stuff from around the world. Um, and you can actually use Adobe Capture for that really, really well uh, to grab color palettes. So wherever you are, as you go about the holidays, grab some colors because the holidays really have awesome colors. Uh, and it's always so vibrant and magical and fun and warm. Let me show you some other silliness that I have here that's been the inspiration for the little fox that you see there. So I collect all sorts of... Um, plant pot so we have mr fox here and then we have mr piggy and at home i have many many more <laughs> so i don't know if you can see them there but they're part of our inspiration for our drawings today those so are I think so <laughs> cute and and again like you know in terms of coloring i do go ahead and experiment with color and that's Absolutely, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's just a little trial that I do on paper. Right, so uh, th that's the reason why you will find the sketches there. Feel free to use it, feel free to draw over it. If not, uh, you can just use it as inspiration so you can showcase how much better than me you are <laughs> drawing. <laughs> Yes. Then uh, we're going to find three different files. One is the drawing starter file, uh, which I'm going to show you just real quick. Let's jump into Illustrator. And you see uh, here, what I wanted to share is a little bit of process. Of course, that's what we're going to be doing together. Uh, but the best solution for those of you that claim, I don't know how to draw. Well, the beauty of using Illustrator in particular is that uh, you can use shapes to hate you. And that's why I really wanted to look at the sketch that I've done uh, with the pencil, because that's a great starting point to start and in and have a, have a look at shapes. Uh, so with this file, you will literally see how I created simple shapes and uh, the progression of course, in the final, there are many more details. Uh, hopefully, we'll have to, uh, you know. And actually, if you wanna, if you wanna, in the chat, let us know if you wanna start with a bird, with a bear, uh, with a little fox, whatever you oh, prefer. Yeah. There, are, there are different things that we can do together. We can, I can help you, you know, recreate it, and we can do that step by step. Uh, and I um, love. I think that you've done some uh, daily creative challenges with this as well, and I have too of creating things with simple shapes. I love seeing your process of how these are basically just simple shapes that have been kind of leveled up from that, um, especially the fox. I love the fox that it's like, oh, it's just circles and it's a, a, a hexagon and then like a couple organic shapes, but it's mostly just basic shapes that are augmented. Yes, exactly. And that's the power. That's what I would say is the superpower of Illustrator, creating complex illustration and playing with vectors. So the rectangle is a vector and the fox is a vector. They're both vector shapes. The, the difference between the rectangle and the fox is just that there are a lot, of, as Andrew say, a lot of circles and other different shapes combined together. Yep. But otherwise, they're just shapes. And uh, simply by having a little bit of uh, a guideline with, uh, with your drawing, because that will allow you, you know, when you go ahead and look at the different 
different drawing and be like, oh, that looks like a circle. Oh, that looks like, you know, you just, you just be able to sort of start to have an idea of which shape to use yep. uh, with a different drawing. And that's why, you know, when I've done the fox, I try to use, I also think about shapes as well. And that's yep. why that image is there uh, as a guide, as a general guideline. And it looks like also, the chat yeah. is pretty much uh, resoundingly saying F-O-X, they want the fox. Okay, <laughs> let's just start with the most complex one. Right. Of course, of course, of course. we're here to have fun together. So uh, I love Mr. Fox as well. Um, just real quick, the other two different files that you will find are template files that for you will see an extension called dot AIT. If you're not familiar with it, that simply means an Illustrator file. So what is commonly .ai, but with a T at the end, it will transform our file into template. That means that every time that we open a template and I should have one here on my desktop, hopefully, here it is. So every time that we open a template, uh, what, what it does, and I don't want to show this one right now. <laughs> right. <not> open. <laughs> Andrew's, Andrew's, Andrew's real quick on that trigger finger. <laughs> I, yep. <laughs> I, I've done I've done the same thing a few times. Uh, I actually have never used templates, which is uh, it's, I like as much as I've used Illustrator, I've never saved an AIT. And so I'm super interested to see what this looks like. Fantastic. So uh, every time that we open an EIT file, and I'm just going to have to be very careful here with what I'm doing, I'm just going to go ahead and I got you. And <laughs> close the pre-release. So we have uh, every time that we do open an Illustrator file uh, with a template, what we do have is an unnamed file. File. So you will open an untitled file. And every time that we open an untitled file, we'll be able to create modification, add shapes, and then save your file without having to compromise the original file. That means that here you have a festive greeting card, which has the shape of a greeting card ready to print. And for those of you that are not familiar with bleed, I have actually included the bleed within the size of the design. Um, so we can just go ahead and drawing. We don't worry about being too specific here, although during the stream, we will talk about bleed real quick. And then if we uh, do the same with the postcard here, you will find that, that we have a front and a back and a little bit of details for the back of the postcard ready to print. Aww. So by playing with templates, all it means is that you're going to be able to open, add, modify, save and print these templates many, many times. But when you're going to go back and open a new template, you will be uh, having a new blank file to start with. So that's the difference from an Illustrator file and an Illustrator template file. We're that's gonna amazing. Have a wide... That's super powerful. So you can you can never mess up and you always have your template there uh, in perfect conditions, ready to be used. I love so. That. Let's get started with the fox. Before we get started with the fox, I just want to give you a little bit uh, of an idea of how to use. And I'm glad to look at that. We read each other mine. It looks like I was using the fox already. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so that's an idea of how you can use your greeting cards. So if you, for, for example, want to share uh, photos of your family or friends and you want to send it to other family and friends, all you have to do here is to import it. I'm going to show you how to do that in Illustrator, maybe frame it, and then you can use your little bird and your little foxes inside or around the photo to frame it. Uh, and then uh, we can also show how to make the fox a sticker real quick here. Um, Hopefully, remind me of that, Andrew, because my memory was wiped out a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> when I started to use a uh, Mac and Windows. I just think that my <laughs> my hard drive just completely went. So, uh, there is any question, or are we ready to start? Uh, I think we're good to go. Uh, someone had a question about bleeds, but uh, we, the chat is helping out with what those are, and I'm sure we'll talk about them as we go. So, I think we're ready to jump right in. Fantastic. So as everybody was super curious about the fox, let's go ahead and have a look about the fox. We can use this as a reference and I'm just going to go ahead and click on uh, the Arbor tool or you can use the shortcut Shift O in order to access the Arbor tool, which will allow you to click and drag a new Arbor where we can go ahead and recreate our Mr. Fox, Mr. or Mrs. Fox. So um, as you can see here, what we started from was an hexagon. And if you're like, well, I don't see any hexagon, how do I create an hexagon? Well, most likely when we do start with our um, with our um, toolbar, we'll find uh, the rectangle tool selected over here. So I'm gonna zoom in so everybody can see. Oops, maybe inside Illustrator. I have too many shortcuts here. 
<laughs> so here it is on top of the toolbar we can see the rectangle tool and by clicking and holding you you see every little tool that has an active corner so a corner um on the, their bottom of their icon that means that there are hidden tools there so we can click and hold in order to display all the hidden tools and in this case under the rectangle tool you'll be able to find the ellipse tool polygon star and light segment tool and the one that we're going to select is the polygon tool now once we click and drag and i'm going to go back into the zoom once we uh, have the polygon tool selected and we click and drag in order to create a polygon which is currently filled with a pattern because we're going to learn how to create a yes. pattern as well um, you can use the arrow keys in order to choose the amount and the number of sides so you can actually use the polygon to create a, a triangle or square uh, or a pentagon or in this case we're going to use an hexagon just yep. like so and uh, again she's just clicking and dragging and you're holding down that click and then using the arrow keys to go up and down I just learned about that a little while ago and I also just learned about the slider on the side that you can adjust the number of sides with the slider as well um it's it's magical I'd always just hit enter and then typed in whatever number I wanted and there's like nine different ways to get <laughs> greater like yeah, it's way faster the properties panel is super cool it actually allows you to add and in this case i usually use it for more complex shapes so you can see you can go really really easily up to like 18 sides i don't know what would you call that especially in english 18 hectagon yeah something like that yeah <laughs> acting gone <laughs> i really don't know <laughs> but that's a really cool way as uh andrew pointed out to use the properties panel click on the three dots in order to show more option and you'll be able to real quick um edit and and here i mean that that's how cool it is it actually gives you the length of every side so you can really work out details about your uh shapes inside the properties panel by clicking on more options right um so i'm gonna go ahead now and go to my stroke and fill control at the bottom of the toolbar and i'm just gonna simply reset it by clicking on the icon that is on top of the um actual control or you can use the shortcut with the letter d and that will automatically uh, change the fill into white and the stroke into black, which are the default uh, for our shapes, color and fill. And now all we're left to do is start to uh, think how we can get the shape. And I'm just going to go ahead and take the head and push it here because again, use references. Um, that's my big and strongest recommendation. Use references. Again, the references that I started with is my drawing. So have a quick sketch on paper. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that will allow you to see, oh, it looks like, you know, we have this lovely shape for the, for the face and for the nose. How do we recreate that? So all I did here was to go back inside our shape tool and by click and holding, we're now accessing the ellipse tool. You can also press the letter L on your keyboard to access the ellipse tool. And here, click and drag to create an ellipse. In this case, I wanna use a perfect circle just because it will allow me to be much quicker while I design and will allow me with, to, to work with proportion a little bit better because I know it's a perfect circle. So uh, I will know that the, the actual, all sides of our, yep. um, of our circle are the same is not as an ellipse so the diameter uh will be actually the same so what we have to do is to press the shift key while drag while dragging so as you can see i haven't let go of the mouse yet so i'm clicking and dragging same if you're using the trackpad and old shift and you'll see also they will have our wonderful smart guys that tell us hey proportions are correct you're using a perfect circle. yes it's just like that thumbs up of like hey you're doing great like thanks illustrator <laughs> yeah. thanks so much for the help Aren't they super cool? Right. So what I try to do here when I overlap shape is then to have a, a empty feel uh, just to make sure that I see what's going on underneath. And I want to share another quick shortcut in order to uh, swap between fill and stroke, you can use the letter X. So you can see here in the control, we have the fill and the stroke coming back and forward. And if you want to um, set the fill order stroke to none rendering it transparent all you have to do is to use the forward slash yes. so in this case i want to make sure that we have the fill on top that means that we are controlling the fill and then i'm going to press the uh, slash the forward slash and you'll see that that make it transparent and that will allow me now to see that uh, and to align our lovely circle here perfectly inside our shape yes get and that perfect little contour yeah, and all we have to do here now is just to uh, try to find the right uh, corner in which we wanted to uh, 
sorry, not the right corner, the right size for our circle in order to leave enough space for the nose, because as we see before, it was a little bit too big. Um, so although it was perfectly positioned, it was just going over the little point, which we know is gonna, we're gonna use as the mouth for the fox. Yep, and what's now, great about yep. like something like this is this is a great just base shape for animals, right? For any animal that has this kind of facial structure, um, you could elongate it a little bit and it could be a reindeer. Uh, you could probably make Correct. this a goat pretty easy. It, it's those basic shapes. That oh, how do they call it a washi washi bear? Yes. Uh, that, yeah, what are they called? In Italy, we call it washi washi bear. Um, what are they called? Raccoons. Raccoons, <laughs> yes. We call them trash pandas. <laughs> Well, that's so funny because in Italy, we, uh, they wash everything they eat, don't they? Oh, yes. They do like, the little like... Yes. Yeah, they do the little like thing. So yes. we call it washi washi, which is clearly not uh, translated the same in English. That's hilarious. But yeah, you can create a, a bunch of different animals from this. So if you're following along and you want to create a different animal, go for it. See what you can create out of this basic shape because it is the ears, the nose, the face is very similar to a lot a of different animals. Maybe a hedgehog. Little hedgehog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you actually go, uh, and we, I've done something really silly last night, it, it, we had a really heavy snow, which I absolutely adore. And I thought that's perfect for our stream. So if you go on my Instagram, on the stories, you'll be able to see that I've created a little scene with a tiny snowman. There's a tiny little snowman. Little pot. There's a tiny little snowman. There is a hedgehog, the fox, the little pig, and all my little friends that I have in the house, they're there uh, telling you to come and join us here at Adobe Live. Oh, and that's so fun. I think is on my at I am Platy on Instagram. Yes, I have never been in the snow. So I've gone <gasps> to the snow to like visit the snow and like go sledding and stuff, but I've never been somewhere that it's like organically snowing. Um, so I, at some Definitely point- need to fix that. Yeah, I need to find need somewhere to come and, and just- visit Manchester. Yeah, see the snow. <laughs> right, before we keep going, I just wanted to show you another quick, another quick trick. So what I've done here um, is to um, duplicate our circle and I'm just gonna uh, redo it real quick select your shape all the option key or alt key depending if you're using a mac or windows and then also the shift key so the alt and option will allow to create a copy and you'll see that your cursor will change real quick into a black and white arrow and then you can click and drag and by doing so you're creating a copy but also if you hold shift you will see that you will keep the same height as well so all we have to do is now to make sure that we intersect uh the other corner of our hexagon and we're pretty much done <laughs> that easy so um let's go ahead and before we keep going i want to show you how to transform the corner and to make them uh, rounded that's completely up to you uh, sharp corner are also fun so you do not have to do exactly what I do if you like pointy corners maybe you want to do like a more origami looking like feel that you know keep going with your a pointy corner but if you do wish to turn your corner from a pointy into um, rounded all you have to do is to select your shape and then by pressing the letter A you activated the direct selection tool and we have the corner widget appearing at each corner you can select one of them or you can select all of them depending on what you prefer and you can click and drag in order to make your corner rounded just like so and uh, the wonderful properties panel i believe that's under appearance also come into head uh with uh, more options if we i believe is no it's not in here so what we can do is perhaps double click on the widget tool let me see if i remember well yeah so if you double click on the actual uh corner widget i'm sorry what corner <laughs> Yeah, we can have a super control of our corner. So double click on each one of the little dots. That's what I called, and I believe it's called the widget, uh, the corner widget. And by doing that, we can open up the corner. So if you want to be very specific and you're working with someone, be like, hey, I want the corner to be 15 millimeters or 10 millimeters, you can actually have control of each single corner and be super precise. I had also... no idea that you could double click. Oh yeah, look at that. You can and do you can a do, diamond shape what? and you can do, yeah. I had no idea that these options existed. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so many hidden options here in Illustrator. Fantastic. So you can have a play and do whatever you want. And once you're ready to go, uh, all we have to do here is first to create a copy. Why? Because as you can see here, this little bit that we're going to be using for our cheeks are pretty much the same bits that we're gonna be using for the years. And that's something that I cannot stress more when working with shape, recycle, 
recycle, recycle. Yes. You can recycle so many shapes and make them look like in, you know, to the different other parts. And that not only is a great time saver, but also the eye will pick up on this consistency and it will really make your uh, design much more easy to take in because everything is proportionate. Everything is a repetition of the same shape and our eyes are built uh, to uh, look for these symmetries and these beautiful uh, consistency in design. So let's have a look because we're going to use this little cheek shape here for our uh, ears as well. And now something else that I want to do before we start to make this circle disappear is to create another copy. In this time, I'm just going to use the Alt and Option key and I'm going to drag it up for the forehead in order to uh, get rid of the little point on top. Again, uh, I'm going to hold the Shift in order to resize and Option to make sure that resize from the center until I'm happy um, with the sort of line that I wanted the forward here. You can do pretty much whatever you want. Uh, as you can see in the previous one, I've done it like right up uh, to the, the little corner just by chopping the corner. What you want to be aware of when you create shape is to make sure that your shape overlap. So the most important thing is that your shape overlap and once they overlap, you'll be good to go. And we're going to see in a second why it's so important that the shape overlap because we're going to use our shape builder. I, click, yes. I, keep, I keep clicking on Alt. So as you can see, I'm creating many, many copies <laughs> of the same of the same design. Uh, and again, here you don't necessarily have to do a perfect circle. Uh, maybe uh, an ellipse will hate a little bit better with the actual forehead, so it's so it's not too too rounded, and is a more of a natural. Uh, shape of, uh, of our fox head, just like so. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you that is because it happens many times that we have multiple shapes that we're going to use to construct. They almost look like a, an alien fox now. <laughs> he's got, <laughs> he's got like that. cute little chubby cheeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so what I want to show you here is how to isolate different parts. So I'm not going to go ahead and select everything because that's going to start to create a lot of confusion when creating the shape. I'm just going to do one thing at a time and I would strongly recommend you to do the same. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to make sure that we uh, create our little forehead on top. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag on the hexagon and the ellipse. And then I'm going to go ahead into my toolbar and make sure that I use the shape builder. And we have this lovely animation once you hover on the tool that shows you real quick how you can combine shape. That's a real game changer when using Illustrator. By, uh, as you can see, once we access the uh, shape builder tool, it will highlight the area that we can either connect and build together or isolate. Now, if you press the option Alt key, you can turn the plus into a minor and that will allow you to erase. So in this case, we're going to subtract shape. I'm going to start by subtracting the top uh, of the shape there. And then I'm going to go ahead and click and drag in order to add uh, the top of the shape of the ellipse and the uh, sides of the hexagon there. Yes. And then we can go ahead and erase these other two sides. And uh, here we go. We can do the same with the bottom. Magic. There. So all we did here is to use these two shapes to create uh, the forehead. If you zoom in, and I all strongly recommend you to zoom in, you can pick up on little details that, again, completely up to you. You can decide and try to keep it or maybe not. Uh, we're going to place our here there, so it's not necessarily something that you have to worry about. I decided to keep it, but again, you can Command Z, Control Z to undo and go back and forth and see yep. whatever you prefer with that. What I love about using the Shape Builder tool is it's the equivalent of like whenever I would look at something and get feedback, I would be like, ah, oh, not that. And like, put this over there. It's that. Like, it's literally just like scribbling over and be like, yeah, I want this over here and I want that one with this one and like kill that one. And it just works so quickly and so easily. Um, and yeah, when I graduated from Pathfinder into using the Shape Builder, it's just a like world changer. <laughs> Yeah, because it gives you a preview as you go. Yes. Um, and as I said, we we're going to go ahead and isolate. So I'm just going to take a step back. Once you can delete the, the outside part, I also want to isolate the inside. So I'm going to press option and click in order to delete the outside. And then I'm going to go ahead and click inside the part that I want to isolate because those are going to be our ears. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to press option in order to create a copy uh, of this little shape and then click and drag one of the corner of its bounding box by pressing the shift key in order to constrain proportions. And here it is. We have our little ears as well, which Aww. are literally um, the same as the chick again. 
wonderful gift for our eyes that seek for that repetition and consist symmetry and consistency. Now, Command C to copy, Command F to duplicate, and then we're going to use these lovely flip horizontally little icon on top of the properties panel to real quick flip our little here, and we're just going to drag it on the other side. Now, if you want to make sure that the here's are located at the center, um, it, again, just to offer that symmetry look, what you have to do is simply to select them. If you want, you can also rotate them. I believe that in the um, previous little drawing, I rotate. I actually like it when we're near up and one yep. down. I think it's oh yeah, it's cute. got the little cute little floppy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but otherwise, if you want to keep it the same, I would strongly recommend first to do a modification. So in this case, to rotate and then Command C, Command F and uh, uh, flip it and then bring it to the side. Once you're roughly to the place where you know that you're gonna place your ear, hold shift and click on the other ear and press command G to uh, make them into one group. So the selection is now one. When we select one ear, we have both of them selected. Hold shift again and select the head and then click once more to make the head. As you see, the path of the head becomes a reference point, a key point that we're gonna use in order to align our ear. And as you can see, the align is already set to key object because we double click on the shape that we wanted to use as a key object and what i'm going to do is to align it horizontally to the center so we moved over here so they're horizontally centered in the head yep. and we're pretty much ready to go with another shape builder magic actually let's showcase our pathfinder because we mentioned it before. oh yeah let's do so some, let's yeah give it a let's give it a moment of glory to the pathfinder. absolutely and we got no. about 25 minutes left just for a time check so we are Already. making great progress Where i know the time's right gone. right it's Where just time's flying gone. away <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and click on the first icon under the Pathfinder in order to unite. And in this case, all we're going to do is to unite this shape uh, for our little fox. And uh, for the nose, you can use whatever shape you want. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and create a little circle on top. Um, and what we're going to do here is add back to our um, little pathfinder tool shape builder tool sorry and go ahead and click on the nose to create one uh copy a, a one isolated path of the nose and then all the option and then click on the part that we want to subtract or erase and here it is just a little bit pretty much done. Boop, boop. i think i picked up that for paul from paul trani you know oh we, yes uh, i think paul is the one who always does that boop Yep, and uh, <laughs> we have really, really cool. we have people sounding off in chat about what holidays they're celebrating. I know Hanukkah just started, uh, I believe, yesterday. So there's some oh. people um, celebrating that, and then we had Umicorn said in Netherlands we have Center Class. Center class, maybe that happens on the fifth and sixth of December, and I'm so interested because I've never heard about that. So Umicorn, tell us about what Center Class is. That sounds awesome. <laughs> so exciting! I love I love to learn new things. Right. And in the meantime, all I'm doing here is now selecting the shapes and then creating a simple ellipse for the highs. And I'm going to use exactly the same. Oh, this, this fox looks even more cool than the other one. Oh, he um, does. <laughs> it's like a bigger fox. It's like, that's probably mom fox. And the other one is baby fox. Oh, little baby fox. Yeah, little family. Um, so again, here, I'm going to select both of the circle and first align them uh, to their center to make sure that they are the same height and then place them in a group. Again, hold shift and add the main head to the uh, selection. Click once more to make sure that the head is at the center of the selection. And then you want to align the eyes horizontally. And again, you can place them wherever you want. I'm going to place a little bit more down. So it just looks like it's like looking down and just being cute. Yep. Um, and here it is. So we got like the biggest part, which is the, uh, the head. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the body. And then uh, I'm just going to... I'm not going to go into the final, final details because, again, uh, I'm happy to show you what it looks like. And again, you have this file available for you. Uh, so again, you can press Command Y. That's what I'm doing here. So it will show you what the shape looks like. So you have the breakdown of the single shape. I want to show you the body. The tail is just a replica of the body. Um, yep. And you're going to see how easy that is. And then just because of time, I think it will be nice to move on into perhaps the pattern. And, uh, and then the also. sticker. Yeah, uh, let's and real quick, uh, people who are looking to follow along because there's a lot of people that are saying they're just hopping in one welcome hello happy holidays uh, and two we have a link for you for these files as well as a ton of other files throughout the week right down there bit.ly slash adobe live holidays and that will take you to a folder that has uh assets for every single stream this week we are having an adobe uh holiday uh 
special. Special. Oh, man, I forgot how the <laughs> words worked. Um, it is called Home for the Holidays. We are being your creative home for the holidays. We have four streams every day this week, so make sure that you stay tuned, and there will be free assets for you for every single one of those streams. So you can watch this after the fact. Yes, replays are on, and then you also can go to the link right there under Cloudy, and you can get all of the assets that we're working on right now. Um, and Cloudy, we have some uh, clarity on what... Uh, what that holiday was with Umicorn. It is uh, the Feast of Sinterklaas celebrates the name day of St. Nicholas on the 6th of December. The feast is celebrated annually with the giving of gifts uh, of St. Nicholas. And it looks like there is a character that punishes bad children. I think that it's the the, the Krampus. Um, Uh-oh. Which is... Better watch out. Right? Um <laughs> I, I love that that twist that it's like, oh, you don't get coal. Like there's a monster that's coming to get you. Uh, that's <laughs> just keeps those kids in check right there. <laughs> Um, and you then, believe it that when I was uh, when I was sorry to, to interrupt, no I'm just gonna say this real quick. When I was young, uh, I had uh, some member of my family that were dressing up as Santa Claus, and I have videos recording on tape. Uh, and I was scared, terrorized, yes, because it was like a magical creature. And I would be like, you know, they were trying to make me happy and you know try to make it festive. And all in all the videos, I'm there crying my face like. <laughs> ah! Yes. Yes, uh, and then we have uh, Paloma saying, uh, I celebrate Christmas as well as Kwanzaa happening uh, December 25th to January 1st. I usually fast all day and then cook and make uh, uh, make and go to events at church. That's awesome. There's so many fun oh, holidays. Okay. Um, and somebody else asked why it looks like I'm looking at Claudia when we work. Uh, Claudia's screen is actually over here for me. Uh, chat, you are over here and Claudia's face is over here. So if you see me looking all over, I just have Minority Report screens and that's why it looks like I'm looking at Claudia because I'm watching her work over here. Um, so let's hop in. Let's talk about some uh, of the other things that we want to cover today, Claudia. Where are we going? Yes, I just wanted to show the body real quick because it seems complex and it's super, super easy. So I am before jumping into the pattern and then the sticker, uh, I just want to give a quick heads up on how to do this uh, this shape. Um, again, we're just going to jump into the ellipse real quick and click and drag in order to create a perfect circle. And then check this out. It's so easy. I love it. All we have to do is to press the letter A to action to uh, act activate the direct selection tool and click on the very top anchor point and then all i'm gonna do is to bring the anchor point up and that's such again as andrew was saying before a useful shape starting point for body i use it for so many characters yes. is the drop shape and then you can use uh, the handle of the anchor point in order to create different variation of the drop so uh, by holding the alt and option key you can move it around make sure to have selected the pen tool so again with the pen tool selected you can use option and over on your anchor in order to make sure that we create our handle and then we can go ahead and click on each one of the handle by uh, again holding option in order to modify maybe only one side of the handle uh, just like so another quick way you can create these uh, lovely shapes is to use uh, the pen tool to create a path so again you can go ahead and create any path you want and in this case i'm actually gonna start from a, a straight line to show you the power of this tool and then i'm gonna go ahead and select the width tool with the width tool we can change the width of any path anywhere inside the path so in this case for example we can click and drag in order to create that's another way in which you can create the drop shape uh, just like so and by holding the option and alt key you can change only one side of the path so not only will allow you to change the path into an actual shape and again you can add as many of these as you want so i can add another one to the center here and then i can change and make the right side a little bit thicker and the left side maybe a little bit thinner uh, just by using the alt key when playing and i'm going to zoom in so you can actually see what i'm doing here with the handle uh, again all the option in order to control just one side well if you control uh, if you do not hold shift you will be changing both sides at the same time and as you can see that's how i created the body and how i created the shape of the tail and if you use and decide to go for the width tool because you find it perhaps more flexible uh, once you um created the path remember this is still a path is a line and all we're playing with is the, like the width of the stroke so if you uh, accidentally change the width of the stroke into something else it will then you know 
really make an impact on your design. So what I would like to strongly suggest you to do is to make sure that once you're done and you're happy with your shape, head to the object panel and select expand appearance. And just by so we will transform our stroke. It's now a real shape. And after we're done that, rough command again, super tip, right click on it and click on simplify in order to uh, use less anchor point as possible, rendering yeah. your file lighter. I've never thought about making an organic shape like that by using the width tool, but that's such a smart way because you can really get those smooth curves without having to use the pen tool or get too crazy with the pencil tool. You can just put a line and then pull out either way. I love that for tails and kind of these teardrop shapes. That's super, genius. Super, super fast. Yeah. And again, like I'm, I'm not gonna, as you can see here, I've done different movement for the path, but that's pretty much how the body started to go. And here it is. I mean, even like that, it's cute. And then, you know, the, the, the two arms are a rectangle and I'm gonna go ahead and switch into the outline mode by using Command Y. There will be Control Y if you're using Windows. You can easily see that the back legs are uh, an ellipse and again, a rectangle with rounded uh, corners. So everything that we've done already is there for you to finish off the fox. And again, this file is available for you. So once you go ahead and open, make sure to set to uh, outline mode. You can also uh, access outline mode from you, uh, from the view menu, you, <laughs> from you, from the view menu, and then uh, make sure that you go ahead into outline. Uh, and again, you'll be able to see the actual shapes, which I think is very useful as a guideline. Oh, but absolutely. Let's jump into creating a pattern real, real quick here. Let's do it. So I use the pattern in order to fill different areas, to create a little bit of a texture and also to create repetition in a style of graphics. So once I created all these different animal and we see them at the end, we'll be able to see that they're sort of part of the same family. And once we create it for our greeting cards or our stickers, they'll be easily recognizable. And that's sort of like a mark of a theme again for your illustration and to make them part of a family. Now, what's important when you create a pattern is to be clear of the size of the artboard. That will be a great reference. So again, let's go ahead and start by creating a new artboard shift all uh, in order to access the artboard tool is here at the bottom of the toolbar and then click and drag to create an artboard uh, of any size then press the return and enter key to open the artboard option and from the width and height field you can set the artboard to whatever size you want so in this case for example i'm going to use a, a 30 millimeters by 30 millimeters, you can do 100 by 100 pixels, whatever you prefer. Uh, all you need to make sure is that, of course, the width and the height are the same because we are going to need a perfect square. Yep, I like that and as also, designers, like even though uh, in the States we have inches and there's centimeters, but like all of us speak pixels. We're just like, all right, yeah. hit me with pixels. <laughs> yeah, like that, 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 that will cut a short. Yeah, thing, universal <laughs> measurement system right there. And also the beauty is that here is, for example, if I do want to know what is a... Uh, um, these in inches there is a way in which you can i'm now stretching myself but i think oh to can... change the units and increments yes, yes you can hit yes. command k will bring Perfect. up your preferences so command k is preferences and then you go to units and uh right there and then you can change it to inches Perfect. and it will show you that uh so if you need to jump around uh you can do that sometimes it won't change while the document is up, you'll have to like start a new document. So that may be happening. Uh, it goes back and forth for me and I never know why or why it's not working. Uh, but that is a way to change your units if you want to change them. And also, I think that uh, because this document is going to be in millimeters, if you are comfortable working in uh, in inches, you can still input here the inches value, and yes. then it will turn into millimeters. So, for example, now I have no clue what inches are, but I will say fifty inches, and then the same. The most important thing. Oh, that's big. Converts it to yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes. As you can see, it will turn it right away into millimeters. But if you know inches, just input the inches value, and then it will automatically turn it into yep. uh, millimeters. And I there. believe that those boxes also do math so if you have like yes. five eighths of an inch you can put five dash eight uh, of an inch and I it will convert it for, to decimals i use that for um creating like instagram uh, puzzles so yes we know that instagram is like for example 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels uh in this case if for example i want to create um let's say uh, a column of three so i know that the the we just input a 1080 pixels for the width but for the height all i need is 1080 
by which is uh, the asterisk yep whatever is the number that you want in this case is three and then pixels and it will automatically do the math for you it's and now, so of good course, it's so good huge column so yes uh, you don't need to know math yeah. and that's why i love illustrator Just i'm about. dyslexic and that will be hard it's so me. helpful all right we got about 10 minutes left sorry so let's, <laughs> let's go i keep talking i know the time is flying away from us we we're just count right. down to the holidays so, all right let's go let's make it fun i'm just gonna go ahead and use one of the little birdies in order to create our pattern and i'm gonna remove the pattern because you cannot create pattern that contain pattern uh so i'm just gonna go ahead and remove that little item there that contained a pattern and all i'm gonna do is just to make our little um bird smaller and that's another good point once you create all these um shapes using using stroke uh sorry once you create all this illustration using uh shapes that most likely will have a stroke once you're happy with it i would strongly recommend you to select your final design head to object path and outline stroke uh, the one that you will find in my file there's still stroke because i wanted to leave you the capability to change the width of the stroke so uh, in this case you put perhaps make the stroke as big as you want as punk as you want uh, or maybe delete it completely but if you start to you know once you're done and you're happy with it path and outline stroke it will allow you to resize the design by keeping uh, what you're happy with in terms of final final drawing so we have here our little bird and we're gonna have just a copy of a bird and then i'm just gonna create something very simple which is uh just an ellipse we can use any of the color here um just like so i mean and that that perhaps could could do it for the purpose of what we're showing here and how do we make sure that these actually repeats uh consistently into a pattern well yes. what we have to do is to flip at the top and the bottom so i'm going to go ahead and select the elements that are sticking out from the top because i really want them to uh you know everything that is uh bleeding out of the top we want it to revert it to the bottom so the shortcut is shift command m uh, I believe to access the move tool, you can also right click transform move and then we're going to use the position. So in this case, we're going to set horizontal to zero and vertical. Remember, you need to uh, know the size of your artboard, which we knew it was 30 millimeter. Uh, so you can set to 30 millimeter and then make sure that your preview is on to see where we are moving it. So we're moving at 30 millimeter down. If you're going down is a positive value. If you're going up is a negative value. So it will be 30 millimeter if you're moving from the bottom to the top. And then make sure to press on copy, not on okay, because if you press on okay, you will just move them. But by pressing on copy, you will actually uh, create a copy um, of your drawing. And let's do the same here for the side. So I'm gonna select everything that is hanging out on the right side shift command or shift control m to access the move tool in this case we're going to set the vertical position to zero and the horizontal as i say we're moving to the left so minus 30 millimeter if you say y30 because that's the size of my artboard and again press on copy and you can see here is moving to the right side with the preview press on copy in order to have our copy done and we're nearly done one more thing what is really important for you to create a pattern is to have a container so i'm going to go ahead and press the letter m to access the rectangle tool and create a 30 by 30 again that's the side of our artboard uh, and click on ok and we have this rectangle here and make sure that it's centered inside our artboard by using the align option under properties and also we want to make sure that we bring it to the very back and i'm going to use that command or control shift left bracket to bring it to the back yes and i'm also going to make it transparent because we do not need to necessarily have a background now once you're done already all you have to do is to click and drag over the entire design and then simply drag it inside your swatches and if everything works right and that's the moment of the truth we can go ahead and create a, a rectangle and i just simply drag the ruler here <laughs> so click and drag to create a rectangle make sure that the fill control is on top and then click on your new swatch panel that you create on the, this new swatch that you created and here we have our lovely pattern look that at we the just birds created. if you want to have a, a a color background remember you still need to have a bounding box so in this case all you have to do is to make sure that you uh, create a copy so select the rectangle press command c to copy and then again uh, whatever color you want as a background and then paste and put at the very back your transparent background just to create that container yep and again and bring it back yep something else that's fun is if you actually drag that graphic onto the old swatch i believe it will update the existing swatch um and so if the one with the background if you drag it on top of the old swatch you may have to hold alt or option uh 
Yes. Yeah. They will yes, update. So yes. Old in option. And it and it live updates everywhere that that has been used. And so if you make Ooh. a pattern and then like find that there's something off or something weird, you can just grab it and then click it back onto that swatch, and it will replace the swatch across the board anywhere that you. And have I'm just used gonna it. change the color real quick and make it pink, so it's a little bit more visible. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and replace the one, the last one that we created. Boom. Boom. Exactly as Andrew said. So we have also, so you can create wrapping paper, you can create whatever you want. But now, do we have like five minutes for, three minutes for a sticker? Absolutely, so absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. And uh, we had so many, uh, Harry, please do a stream just on making a pattern in Illustrator. I always have a problem doing that. Um, you're actually in for a, a treat, Harry. We do have another stream coming up uh, this week that is all about making patterns. Um, and Claudia, I'm sure that in the future you will cover pattern making uh, again in a DCC, in a Leica Pro. Um, I'm sure that that will be coming. So keep an eye out, Harry. Absolutely. And uh, something else that I want to uh, really make sure that we focus on when we export pattern uh, is once we go ahead and, uh, for example, save, uh, uh, let's see, save as or let's export it. Um, I'm not sure if it works with export for screen, but maybe it works when we export it um, as a JPEG. I don't remember because that's all these menus are new now. So um, first of all, I need to use an artboard because we have just shapes here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the artboard tool. And that's another trick. If you have a selection and use the uh, artboard tool and then click on whatever you have in, uh, selected, you will see that the artboard will automatically uh, uh, create itself around the object that you have selected. Now, what I was trying to do here is when you save your graphic and let's try to save it as a JPEG, uh, which probably is from export. Uh, uh, export as. Let's see. All I'm trying to show you here, here it is. So no matter, you can access in many different ways. Yep. Uh, um, so if you, and, and again, it doesn't matter if you're exporting as a PNG or a JPEG, all I wanted to show you here is to make sure that you select art optimization, because if you set the optimization to none or type, that's when you start to see all the tiles and the square. And I know that many, many people export, they do their lovely pattern, the pattern is perfect, but when they go and export it, it shows these ugly uh, little um, edges around the pattern. So make sure that to select art optimize, and that's the way in which you can solve the problem. And then go ahead and click on save and your pattern will look just beautiful and ready to print and we'll have no issue in terms of tiling showing up. Nice little wrapping right, paper. So, yes, exactly. So let's go ahead and use our Mr. Fox as an example on how to create a sticker. So yes. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag over the entire shape. It looks like we lost his paws. Make, go, make sure that you select everything and command G to group and alt option or alt on your windows in order to create a copy. And what I'm gonna do here is again, press command C to create a copy of the entire drawing and then press command F to create a copy on top. And then here we can simply use our Pathfinder tool uh, to make sure that we create a copy of the overall shape. And you know, we have here some of these little dots uh, perhaps what I would have done is to make sure that we get rid of some option, but that's not, you know, uh, a huge uh, necessary deal because I'll show you in a second why we're using uh, this image. If you want to get rid of these little dots here, I will strongly recommend to use uh, our shape builder tool and then just simply click and drag over <laughs> it. That. And that uh, will, you know, help you. And if it's the case, maybe just, you know, just really zoom in uh, to make sure that we get rid of all these little items over here and now once we have created our little fox and again make sure to zoom in because there are a lot of little detail that you might have missed or i might have missed like here uh, to clear it up and uh, if for whatever reason it doesn't pick it up you always have the option to use the dark selection tool or the pen tool in order to delete any point that you don't have so in this case i'm just using the pen tool oops and once you go hover uh any area of your path that you do not want to uh have so like this little corner it might cause a little issue press the letter p and then hover on the point and you'll see that the pen tool will have a little minus uh, in order to erase the anchor point. Fantastic. So uh, now we have an exact copy sitting on top. What we're going to do here is to make sure that like we did before, select the, con the um, fill and stroke control, make sure that the fill is on top. So we're controlling them and press the back forward slash to get rid of the fill. And now that's actually uh, transparent. And we're going to head to our stroke and set our stroke uh, to um, 
a weight that is way, way larger than the actual illustration, but most importantly, making sure that our corner are rounded at the join and the cap, and also that the stroke is aligned to the outside of our illustration. And you can change it and make it of any color you want. So for example, you can make it white or uh, you can make it orange or whatever color you prefer, or maybe even brown. Uh, again, whatever color you prefer, actually kind of liken it in black. And that will really help you to uh, create all these details. So your printer will really be happy if you, for example, feel this space between the cheek and the tail um, that usually will result in a cheaper sticker as well. So yes. the printer doesn't have to go and cut it when you go and use it, you know, it doesn't in the tail doesn't break. So I would strongly recommend to look for all these areas and to make sure that we use a stroke that will fill these areas just like so. And then again, like we did before, we can go to object path, outline stroke, and you will see that the stroke is transformed now into the path. Now, the beauty of having these edges as well is that they will allow you some negative space. So some extra space that is not used by the image in which you can perhaps put your uh, website or your hashtag or whatever you prefer. So all you have to do now here is to use uh, uh, the type tool and click and drag in order to create an area type. And all I'm going to do here is to use my uh, Instagram. So it's I am Claudia. And if you cannot see, it's because he's black and I can't even <laughs> spell my name clearly. Uh, I am Claddy. And then, can't, really can't not spell my name. <laughs> <laughs> that's as you can see i'm not even joking and then of course you can you know i don't know what we're doing here in time andrew uh um, we are out of time pretty much okay uh, so, so yeah we can drop can that on there in there that's it and Boom. whatever else you want inside magic. your illustration in order to to save it magic well um, thanks claudy uh this was super great y'all if you want to download these assets again there is a template for you to download a card um right over there bit.ly slash adobe live holidays there is a card template which you can see on claudia's screen here and then you can use the stickers to create an awesome fun uh little card to send to your friends for the holidays uh we also have a lot of great content coming up uh, after this right after this we oh that's the wrong button how about that one nope how about this one there we go uh, right after this we have some ornaments with our friend shauna and then wade and i are going to be hanging out uh doing some animated gifts some stickers and then nick longo at the end of the day is going to be joining us doing a recipe video we're going to learn about some <gasps> recipes with nick oh, right fantastic. that's gonna be so fun um so i look forward to it i'll be joining as well the chat you yes find me in the chat <laughs> yes uh thanks for joining us claudia happy holidays um, um, and thanks for starting the Adobe Live holiday special off with us. This is a fun time. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure to be here and have fun and make sure to stay tuned for Shauna. Yes. Bye, everybody. <laughs> bye.